Well, yeah, it was fun. I, I really enjoyed, um, you know, the challenge, and I really have grown as a person. I remember when I was first elected, I'd be terrified to speak in front of 30 people, and now I can get in front of an audience of 500 people and be comfortable. I think flood recovery was was one of the toughest things, but also the most exciting. And it was a really a team building. I mean, I just remember my council teammates coming together and you know working hard, 12 to 16 hours a day, setting up the recovery center, and uh, you know handling taking shifts with the emergency phone calls and uh, it was just a really a great team building experience and uh, it was tough I mean it was uh, so many days of uh, working really hard but it was a real good bonding uh, I think a lot of positive things came out of the flood you know despite the travesty but it, you know it really built us council team is a real unit and I think because of that area of working during the disaster it allowed us to be a lot more effective on you know legislative things afterwards mm -hmm. <laughs> you know getting a lot of ordinance done and building that trust so uh, yeah, I like uh, Gay. We actually became pretty good friends. Uh, he was my mayor pro tem during the flood, and he was amazing. Um, you know, I enjoyed working with him. We didn't always agree on everything, but you know, in the bottom, we began to trust each other, and uh, you know, we kind of see the world slightly differently. But you know, I understand that um, you know, we've had different life experiences, and we make different decisions looking at the same data sometimes. But the one thing I will say about Gabe that I really respect is he's a great husband, um, he's a great father, and he cares deeply about this community. And he's gonna make decisions what he thinks is right. We, we all wanna go from point A to point B, but sometimes I think we should go this way, and Gabe thinks we should go that way. But in the end, um, you know, I think it's having that those diverse, sometimes different um, life experiences allows us to um, actually work better together. You know, I know he was really helpful. You know, he was at first was really dead set against my composting initiative. And so I had to kind of work a compromise because I wanted to do something that was like mandatory for everybody. And, you know, we worked out something, you know, because of his influence of making it a, um, a volunteer program. And uh, so sometimes some really good things happen when people with differing ideas can sit down and talk about those differences and figure out, well, how can we work together? And I was able to do that, you know, really well with Gabe. And uh, so I think we, uh, you know, we're going to part as being, you know, great friends and have a lot of respect for each other. Well, you know, it's really grown. I mean, lots of new restaurants have popped up. You know, we got the, the mall built, lots of new restaurants down there, lots of breweries and tasting rooms open up. So, you know, lots of competition has uh, opened up. But, you know, I think competition is a good thing. It forces everybody to up their game and be better. So, um, you know, we welcome competition. And um, so we're, you know, we're coming along and we've always had good community support and uh, I think we hopefully will continue to have good community support. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that I don't think people realize, one of the most important jobs that a mayor has to do in this town is be on the um, Platte River Power Board. And Platte River Power is the power company that creates the power for Longmont, Loveland, Estes Park, and Fort Collins. And, uh, you know, I was re really a good fit on that board because my background's electrical engineering. I totally understand power generation, power transmission. And uh, so I really enjoyed myself on that board. And, you know, while I've been on that board, Platte River Power has increased its renewable energy by 300%. You know, we're now delivering 31% of the energy that flows into Longmont is renewable non-carbon energy. and. Uh, we have also are now on the verge of creating a, a huge um, power treating uh, co-op that will allow us to integrate a lot more wind and we're about ready to sign a huge wind contract for another wind company to bring in as much as another 150 megawatts of wind into Longmont. So by 2020, uh, you know, 45 to as much as maybe 50% of the energy delivered to our city will be renewable energy. And we're doing that and we're still the cheapest power company in the, Colorado were the most reliable and we're providing more renewable energy. So on all three faces, we're, we're doing an extremely good job and I'm really proud of my um, tenure on the Platte River Power Corporation too. Well, you know, like anything, 
uh, everything's always has to be a balance. I mean, I think we can move towards maybe 80% by 2030, maybe even 85, maybe even 90. But the problem is that last 10% gets really, really expensive because when the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining and you get to provide that power by some sort of storage like batteries, that's extremely expensive. And it's, so, you know, these people who want 100% come hell or high water don't understand the economics of that. So unless there's a huge breakthrough in battery technology or something else, that that happens, you know, that's why I was not willing to sign up for 100% renewable because I would be more apt to sign up for a goal of 100% zero carbon, which is a different standard than non-renewables because, you know, one part of the renewals is our uh, hydro um, and that's, the federal government does, doesn't consider that a renewable energy even though it's a non-carbon. Well, you know, I'm really proud of this city. When, when I first became mayor, the first thing that hit us right off the bat was, um, the whole fracking issue is, you know, they wanted to drill and frack at 150 feet from people's houses. At that point, the state setback was only 150 feet. Since then, they moved it to 500 feet. And so, you know, two things were happening simultaneously. We as council worked with their city attorneys and we figured out, okay, can we pass our own city regs and push them right up to the limit, but not cross over so that we can't, we're not conflicting with state regs, but we're giving the maximum protection possible. And we developed our state, our, our city regs that were, you know, protected 97% of our city um, from drilling and fracking and basically banned it from, and of course, you know, we got sued by the governor and COGA, and, uh, but in the end, we were right, we had good facts, and when we were gonna to go to court, they realized that they were gonna lose because they couldn't prove that we were conflicting against states, so they basically um, threw in the towel and said, you know, they dismissed the lawsuit. So that was a huge victory for us, and we're the only city in the whole state that has its own um, gas and oil regs that protect the city. I think, you know, initially, um, when I started on council, you know, even though council's a nonpartisan thing, you know, there were two Democrats and five Republicans, and, uh, I, you know, I was a Democrat. So, you know, I had to build consensus, and generally, um, it was kind of neat how I was able to build trust, and um, basically, you know, in the end, uh, you know, because initially, the Republicans say, well, gas and oil is regulated by state, we can't do anything, or, but, you know, in the end, you know, I think we passed our regs with a five to two vote, and so we, um, you know, I've always had this ability to um, work with people, find some common ground. You know, if you and I disagreed on something and, you know, you voted one way and I voted the other way, I could say, well, geez, we looked at the same set of facts. Why did you interpret the facts differently and vote your way? And then I'd really try to understand from your perspective, you know, how you made your decision. Uh, that doesn't mean, doesn't mean I necessarily agree or disagree with your decision, but I think when you can have, can operate from that frame of reference that, you know, I realize that I don't have all the answers and my life experience isn't the best, isn't the best lens to look at every single problem. And I think that's why I've been so successful, not only as mayor, but my whole life, I've always been able to work in a team environment and build team unity and get the team all rowing in the same direction because I've had that open mind and good communications that, you know, a lot of people just don't have that. But, you know, I kind of learned those skills from my father, you know. He was an electrical, I mean, he's a mechanical engineer. He worked for Boeing Aerospace for three, he designed airplanes, you know, the 747, V-52, 707, so pretty much all the, he even worked on the 757 design towards the end of his career, so yeah, he was an um, You know, I actually went out to Manhattan and I met with a bunch of mayors from all over the United States that had done the internet, um, the broadband, and ones that were successful and ones that were not successful that failed. And it was like a two-day conference, and I came away from that um, knowing I totally understood why the ones that were successful, why they succeeded, and why the ones that weren't successful, why they failed. And I knew after that, I was 100% sure we were gonna be successful because number one, we were leapfrogging the uh, competitors' technology 
you know, by you know, factor 50 or 100. And we also, because we have our own electric utility company, that gives us a leg up because then we have the rights to string fiber on existing poles or pull fiber through existing conduits. And that gave us, plus we had in our fiber ring that was put in, you know, years ago. So I knew right out of the gun that there was no way we were going to fail at this. So then once I understood that and then I was able to explain to all my council teammates that, yes, um, you know, bonding out for $40 million to build this sounds reckless and endangered, but trust me, you know, it's not, you know, so it's just, I, I tried to explain to everybody the best I could, and most of them were on board, you know, anyway, but I think, you know, having that experience um, and find, figuring out, you know, I always am a component is when somebody is super successful, you just copy what they do, you know, in the restaurant business, you find out what the most independent uh, restaurants do that are highly successful and do exactly like they do and you're going to be successful and that's what we did here is we found out wh why were was Chattanooga Tennessee successful and other cities failed well we were doing the, you know what Chattanooga was doing only maybe even better and uh, you know people were calling me and emailing me saying I was reckless I was going to bankrupt the city I didn't know what I was doing I shouldn't take this risk and and you know now it looks like we're going to pay off our bonds seven years ahead of schedule, and uh, it's just been a huge. And it's also been an economic direct. Companies have moved to Longmont because of our gigabit broadband, and it's it's truly amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. so I'm really proud of that. Pardon? Uh, did you get a positive comment about the internet from the community? Oh yeah, oh, everybody loves it. I mean, there's nobody. You know, all those naysayers that say I was going to bankrupt the city. Um, no, I, I think the community is just really proud of our internet, and I'm really proud of that. And I'm, I'm also really proud of my council teammates because, you know, not all this success is my success. I couldn't do this without, you know, it always takes four votes. And to be able to, you know, get everybody else on board and um, get them to help me sell this to the community. And I think the fact that we decided to... Um, place this bond, uh, um, you know, up for a vote and how, uh, you know, that vote from the public was overwhelmingly in favor for bonding out. Um, so I, th I think that that showed that the public was really, really behind this. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I think that's one of my proudest achievements is being the first gigabit city in Colorado and having it be so successful. Is, uh, yeah. But, you know, we have, we have a good staff. We had good council members. Um, Tom Reen Otis, uh, He's an amazing leader for LPC and um, a great friend. And, you know, he took, you know, a, a huge risk because, you know, in, in city life, if you're like a director and you put something out like this, well, you know, if it's highly ses successful, you get a pat on the back, great job. But if it fails, you know, you're out of a job. In the private industry, if someone in the private did something this risky and was this successful, you know, they get million dollar bonus contracts and stuff. So it's, it's kind of funny that, you know, in the public, um, you know, the risk reward is a little bit out of balance in, um, you know, public utility sectors because sometimes you have to take you know, a huge risk and put your neck out there, and yet your reward is great job, it works fine, a pat on the back, but. <laughs> you know, I've enjoyed working with pretty much all my council teammates, you know, I mean, everybody uh, has got their good points and their uh, not, not so good points, but, um, you know, I think everybody that I've ever worked with on council truly wants to make the city of Longmont better. Um, you know, it's it's like anything. You know, you have your 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 favorite council teammates, and sometimes you're not so much a favorite council teammates. But you know, the bottom line is, um, I've gotten support on all three of my different councils on one item or another. Um, you know, it was kind of funny. When it, my most challenging, when I first was mayor, it seemed like uh, working with Gabe, if I said white, he was going to say black, we were going to disagree. And then I said, okay, what is going on here? How come we can't, uh, you know, connect? And then I realized this, this guy is, you know, he's a very, his culture, you have to be relationship-oriented first. So I said, well, I'll go out to, to lunch, learn a little bit out about him and his family. So, you know, kind of built this relationship. And, you know, once we... Uh, you know, built that kind of relationship outside of councils, you know, learning about each other, each other's families. Um, you know, then we, I found out something that I thought we could work on, we could agree on, and we did. We had some success and then did a couple more small things that we agreed on. And after that, it was like, wow, he was like totally open-minded and we could communicate. But it's sometimes you just have to figure out culturally, how do you work with this person? Because you can't work the same 
with each other because each one of us are differently. And um, so, um, you know, fortunately, you know, it took me a few months to figure that out, but, you know, <laughs> I was glad that I was able to because, you know, in the end, he, he turned out to be a really good friend and a really good teammate. And, uh, you know, like I said, during the flood, it was amazing. I'd call up Gabe, he was my mayor pro tem, and say, well, I have to be over here. I've got to meet this congressman and this senator. Um, you know, they're coming off this uh, um, helicopter thing with, and uh, could you go over and do this for me? And he was like, you know, all over it, you know. I mean, he was like, uh, I could just depend on him, you know, 110%, um, you know, even though, uh, you know, he was working <laughs> 12, 16 hours a day, and but he was like, uh, he was just truly amazing during that time, and I really do appreciate, you know, having that relationship, you know, and the fact that we were able to, you know, build, um, you know, that trust. She's always been um, very active in politics and local, local things. She volunteers for everything. She's been uh, president of uh, PFLAG, uh, which is a local organization that uh, advocates for um, gays and lesbians. And uh, she's also been in safe schools coalitions, you know, working against anti-bullying stuff. And, um, you know, so she, from her? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she does her things. She kind of stays out of the politics, but, um, you know, I wouldn't be successful without a great team, and she's part of my team. You know, she, she helps, you know, when I got super busy filling in the gaps, doing more things with the, um, our business, you know, in terms of the accounting, and because I didn't have the time to, you know, enter all the invoices and pay all the bills, and so she took over a lot of stuff that freed me up to do things. So, yeah, um, and you know, to be honest with you, um, I think another legacy that I brought is um, I promoted health and fitness and wellness. Um, you know, I went to National League of Cities and uh, won the uh, 5K race um, twice, overall winner at age you know, 63 and then 64. And finally, you know, last year they brought in a ringer who was a triathlete. She wasn't uh, an elected official. She was uh, from the city attorney's office, but, you know, she beat me by a minute in this really hard 5K. But other than that, um, and, you know, when I first started at Platte River Power, um, their lunches that they served the board members would had like, you know, three or four meat op options and one salad options. And over my term there, it slowly m migrated to like one meat option now and four or five salad options. So everybody's eating healthier <laughs> because of my influence. And, you know, they, they say, here's this guy, 65 years old, that can ride his bicycle 32 miles to the Platte River board meeting and then ride home after. <laughs> so. Um, you know, I might volunteer for some things. I still like to uh, promote um, and advocate for our Hispanic community and, you know, the different cultures here. Uh, but I'm not going to take an active role in any more politics or boards and commissions. I'm, I'm actually kind of looking forward to being able to uh, go on vacations and, uh, you know, I want to go to Peru and Machu Picchu and uh, things like that and uh, maybe even get more insanely physically fit, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to the next phase of my life. I don't have, I think next year I want to do this really, it's one of the most brutal gravel races. It's called the Thresher, Crusher of the Thresher. It's in Utah, but it's a real brutal um, bike race, about six hours long, and you know, over well, it's over 10,000 feet of climbing. And you know, this year I was, um, I did an all out effort to try to break, to go under four hours for a hundred, Mile century, so I went to um, Carmel, Indiana, and they have this race called the the Roll Fast Fondo. And I didn't break my four-hour barrier, but I did four hours and nine minutes, which was 24.1 miles an hour, which is super fast for someone 65 years old. So <laughs> I was pretty proud of that. I still have 20% ownership of the Pump House Brewery, and I'm probably, uh, you know, at some point would look to divest my ownership of that. Um, and, uh, you know, just so I have the freedom to travel at whim and go wherever I want, when I want, without having to worry about making a payroll and things like that. But, uh, you know, it's been, it's been fun. I've enjoyed being a businessman, and I've enjoyed the challenges of it, and I've enjoyed, uh, you know, having a great partnership. You know, we have the exact same ownership that we started with, uh, you know, in 1996. 
So it's kind of amazing. I think our business partnership has lasted longer than most people's marriages do. <laughs> and I think, you know, then again, that goes to why I've been so successful is I know how to work with people. You know, we haven't, as teammates in the business world, haven't always agreed and been angry, but I've always been able to build bridges, mend fences, find common ground, get everybody to agree. Um, you know, quite frankly, I think I've been the glue that's hold that business together because of my people skills. Uh, you know, I, I like challenges. I think the world has changed so much. It used to be you graduate from college, you go to work for one corporation, you work 30 years. But I think once you develop, you know, that critical thinking and you, the ability to get along with people, you can do multiple careers. And I think we're seeing that from the millennials. You know, you can have four or five, six different careers over your lifetime. So, you know, the world has changed. It's evolved at an accelerating rate. And I've just enjoyed... I mean, I really love being an engineer. It was fun designing stuff that flew on the space shuttle, and uh, that was, that's, you know, a lot of great fun. But you know, I enjoyed the challenge of um, going into business. Uh, you know, that was pretty scary. You know, never having any business experience or never having any restaurant experience and going to the toughest business where, you know, there's a lot of failures. But uh, it's like anything. All I did is said, okay, all we got to do is figure out what do the most successful restaurants do and do, do exactly that. If we do that, we will be successful. And that's what we did. <laughs> so I, I don't understand why so many people don't do that because it's such a simple model to figure out. <laughs> I would say to trust staff, uh, you know, at some point we probably are going to have to exercise our contractual obligations to Club Creek um, and they probably are going to um, safely be able to drill and frack underneath Union Reservoir but you know they're going down 7,000 feet, they're taking their caissons well below the water table, they've got the ability to monitor for any methane leaks in their drilling and plumbing and, and doing all that so I'm not worried about um, you know, that organization, as much as I would, you know, a top operating, which was not as good of an operator. So now we have a good operator that knows how to do it and is willing to do it right and actually use all of our um, stuff that we implemented with our rigs, having upgrading and downgrading water monitoring wells to detect for any kind of leaks or any problems. Um, I think if we do all that, um, you know, I just don't see a point of getting into, you know, years and years of more legal battles when we have an operator and they have a good plan to get their gas and oil and they're going to do it away from people's houses and away from everybody. I think we we've can come up with a win-win solution uh, if people just trust in the process and press in our staff and press in our good oil rigs and gas rigs that are going to be followed to a T and monitored. So. Um, I think one memory was, uh, it was during the flood, and I was at this one recovery center, and then like four hours later, I was at this other center, and it's like everywhere I went, Katie Witt was there. I mean, she was like, I thought, did she clone herself? I mean, I've never seen, uh, she was totally amazing too during the flood, so I just, that just resonated with me, just how when the chips are down, some people will rise, uh, rise up and give, you know, 110 percent and that was just kind of fun to see that. Um, you know I think the the mall was I was really proud to see that finally open. I mean it's not really it never was intended to be a shopping mall with you know huge department stores. It was more going to be an event center, a place where people like to hang out um, and uh, I think that that's you know turned out to be very very successful because you know we had enough money in July to pay our um, COP debt with the taxes um, so it looks like it's going to add a lot of tax revenue. We're going to be able to pay back our COPs, and everybody has fun places to go to movies, and uh, you know Whole Foods is awesome, and Sam's Club is awesome. No, you know people shop differently. I mean, I myself, um, it's so easy for me to go online and uh, click. You know, in five minutes, I can I can pick out five different shirts, five different styles, get exactly what I want, my right size. Boom, and I'm done. Whereas if I went down to J.C. Penney's, I'd be looking through three or four stacks of shirts to find maybe one or two that were my size, and then go stand in a long line to check out. It's just so much more convenient to shop online for some items. So, 
you know, when you know your size, you know exactly what you want. It's like, why would any of you want to go to a department store to buy these things when you can go to this website and get exactly what you want? So, uh, you know, the world has changed, and uh, I think Allen Ginsberg realized that, that if you tried to build, um, you know, a shopping mall with big, huge department stores, that was going to fail eventually. And that, that's proven out. I mean, that's proven out all over. Uh, the United States now, so I think he made the right decision in the type of mall he built. And uh, but I still think it's a great place to, to hang out, and you know they have music festivals there, and uh, you know lots of neat, neat, fun events, and you know they're gonna have Halloween for candy yep. for the kids and stuff. So I'm real proud of thing that they have going on. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm real proud of supporting that, and you know we took a lot of slack from you know being behind that, but I think that's proven to be a very successful venture. So. Well, I think in order to be successful, you have to build team unity. You, you have to build that trust and collaboration and have an open mind and just realize that you're not always going to get your way, uh, you know, and that's fine. And also, if you don't win a certain vote, you know, you, we can still walk out at the end of the day and know that, okay, we all voted with our conscience, we all voted what we thought was right. and. Just embrace that and, you know, still love each other even though you disagree with each other when the council meeting's over. That's all I'm going to say. If you can do that, you can be successful.